Good morning. It's indeed an honor being here in this important event at the Mobile World Congress. Let me first clarify that this is a dual session. I'm here on behalf of the Schools Council of Catalonia, but I'd like to make it clear that whatever we might say or whatever we might contribute or whatever we do is meaningless unless this is translated on to the teachers. So what we might bring here must be using the teachers as the final reference, as the final driver of what needs to be done and in the field of education and the new technology. So uh, this is a dual presentation. I'll be doing it myself later, Monica, and I will conclude the session. After three presentations we've seen, the Catalan minister, Mr. Hoffman and Mr. Heppel, many interesting things have been pointed out already. So I would probably could wrap it up by saying that I fully agree with them all. And that would be the end of my presentation. And I will give the floor to Monica. But since I have to take up a bit of the time, let me start with a reflection that precisely took place some four years ago at the Académie Française in 2011, where there was a special working session on the challenges of education. And the guest speaker was Michel Serres, He's a philosopher, a professor at Sorbonne University and Stanford University, member of the French Academy. And the speech he gave was later translated into a book. Let me read this out for you. And so he wonders, we are, are we living a catastrophic times regarding the education of our youngsters? We are always reading about their lack of concentration, their lack of performance, or the time they waste using their mobile phones, or also the notes on their selfishness and the lack of paying attention to the adulthood. This is somehow a perception that could be extrapolated here, uh, I think could be easily regarded in here and also amongst the educators uh, and the agencies. But Precisely one of the things that one could do with Sert's book is to turn this upside down. He insists on the fact that there is the birth of a new human being with a different thinking because he experiences the world differently. And therefore, we cannot exclude, exclusively assess this being based on the thinkings of the past. I think that this is specifically crucial. It's worth stressing because this different world that's conditioning the lives of the children from their very birth is made up of different things, different relationships, different family relations. The role of the religion, the authority has changed significantly. The interpersonal relationships, the friendship and the relationship with other people, the entertainment industry, the values in society, the contact with nature, the life expectancy, life in the households, many things have changed. And indeed, it has changed significantly the way the imagination is developed. By just looking at a the child these days, you can see that uh, imagination develops quite differently from previous eras. So the world has changed. And this is something that we need to incorporate into our mindset uh, for us that we are in this setting, in this sector. So this new person does not communicate the same way. And we cannot just expect from them to have the same wills and desires that were in their parents. And Serge, in his book, says that whatever might seem like a harbinger are just a sign of a life renewing itself. What might be seen as uncomfortable, I think that these are the new life reinventing itself. And this is something taken into consideration and in this changing world, we see the mobile phones popping up. So mobile phones are something of a must for the young people, like probably are for most of us. This is a tool that we cannot just get rid of. Just in a recent interview, 
the head of the miners unit from the Catalan police force said that a miner without a mobile phone feels like he's no one. So stressing the significance of these devices as an identity factor. So we can say that there our youngsters are using these more and more and we cannot just prevent them from using. So this was just uh, some food for thought that I'd like to complement with some other expressions. In that, let's say if after 10, 15 years at schooling with uh, new mobile technologies as applied, apparently people would leave their schools without having the ability to have a balanced approach at skills, at uh, capacity building on the tool which is socially the most significant one these days. So what's the educational uh, approach? One cannot just think that we would prevent the educational prospects that can easily be harnessed during the schooling period. Now, having said that, uh, and I know that this is precisely the just to frame the context that the presentation has already been done by the Catalan minister. Through the agency that we have when it comes to guidance, uh, policies and regulations, and of course, having the possibility to reflect upon the most important topics regarding education. In 2012, there was a specific seminar on the impact brought by the new technologies in the world of education and with a paper that was produced by the school's council. It's worth taking a look at it. And it would be seen as the basis behind the paper that has just been announced today by the minister. And it was just passed yesterday. It was just by chance. Uh, it's, I mean, it's been great. Uh, but if we would have had this meeting today, we wouldn't have said that it hadn't been passed. Yes. So with representatives from the teachers, from the municipalities, from the families, from the administration, so no, it was considered that this was a recommendation that it was worth further disseminating to the education world. And one of the reflections that's included in this paper is that technologies, historically speaking, not just computers, have restructured the companies, the organizations, the ways of working, the ways of relating with one another, and mobile technologies even more so. And this is why we are now facing the fact of having to make the most out of these technologies. And this paper, uh, this is the traditional hard copy, in a very short paper, just 15 pages long. So is aiming at not providing regulations, but trying to help in reflecting so that whatever your area might be, may consider things with a different lens, consider what's most appropriate. So this paper is based on a series of clear-cut things and on schools that have a progressive in and increasing autonomy. We have a digital competence that must be developed for all pupils. We have a broader curriculum so that new technologies may have a meaningful, useful role. We also include the idea that teaching and learning must also work towards the creation of values. We have participatory structures that enable for the participation of parents, and we have a responsibility towards the children. And, and, and this is, again, a guiding paper that should be reviewed by the schools and by parents alike to consider what they fits them best. So all in all, we need to overcome any negative views on technology. We need to try and have this issue turning into something that's beneficial to the students, to all children and teenagers that are in their school years. And therefore, we must try and avoid uh, being restrictive. So. If it has been forbidden, what's been the use of it? We would be having a lack of information, and therefore it would be not useful at all. And this negative approach is something that can be seen in Spain. In indeed, there have been some regulations against uh, mobile phones uh, in the classroom. And precisely the paper wants to reflect upon this and 
to look for a positive harnessing of it. This positive harnessing requires a couple of things. I have already mentioned one, the commitment, the engagement, and the professionalism for teachers. And secondly, this is not just a thing of teachers, but also regarding the relationship with the schools and in between and in inside the schools. And therefore, this commitment, this engagement as one of the key things for the present education and to use it in the present times is one of the commitment that must be taken by the school managers. So teachers may reach out to wherever they can and as, as likely as they can, but they will do better, they will perform better if there is a true guiding mission for the school. And this is the take-home message that I'd like to convey here. I'll now give the floor to Monica and again the second part, the most fundamental one being in the hands of the teachers. I'll now give the floor to Monica. Good morning. Let me dispense with it because of the job with the bird. I teach at a high school at uh, Ponce Cart High School in Tarragona. My question is, uh, mom, uh, tell, hand this in or out the classroom? Let me share my experience with you about it. As said by Ferran, might not a big project on the other way around. It implies small changes, very subtle changes, gradual changes. Anyone's able to start it? in his classroom. This is the framework. One year ago, I switched to a new school. I don't know what uh, my fellow faculty members will, will think about uh, bringing your own device in. You don't know how students will react. I hadn't met them before. I had to show in the facilities. So this is what we usually get. Uh, everyone uses it. It is highly used continuously all the time but uh, not for the occasional purpose. It's for private entertainment purposes as well. Against this background, I guess perhaps I'm complexing it up for me. Perhaps uh, I am becoming a, I'm becoming a sort of monster teacher holding up mobiles together. I wanted to check it how it went in this school, and uh, is, there's always a time for you to uh, go to get back on it. Uh, only 25% of my students had a smartphone, and uh, I expected minimum 50%. This wasn't the case. We had some trials ongoing. I uh, approached that the mobile was disruptive in the classroom. It was a discrimination tool. I wanted to fix it. Meanwhile, they fixed them that up by themselves. We talked about the sharing. They started sharing because they were friends, because they were buddies, because they liked one another, and it uh, succeeded. Next. All the tools we had, Google, for instance, uh, we usually use it. It was available on PCs. We don't always have a PCs in. It is on the mobile, for instance. Uh, there is um, emailing for communication purposes, though uh, WhatsApp is superseding it. Uh, there are tools for us uh, to share. I review that. I uh, score it. They have PowerPoint presentations of a dissected kidney. I download it on the um, website of the school, of the website of the subject, and everyone's uh, watching it. And there is a video channel. There are groups working on that based on Google. Needless to say that these tools did change the daily business of the subjects taught in the classroom. Let me add that uh, I think this is critical information, communication with a mobile, not there is immediate information when you need it as much as you need it, not only when you are at the lab, at the museum, I use it in the classroom as well. For instance, we were doing physics and chemistry the speed problems at uh, the classroom. We were talking about it, about the speed issues. Now let's uh, and get mechanic about it. Let's uh, fix up problems. Uh, and the students get a sheet with problems on it. Motivation zero to fix them up. They, they didn't f feel like doing it. So no more sheets. What's happened in Tarragona? We had the marathon. What's that? A race running. Let's uh, pick up data about it. The length of the race, there was a man who uh, 
have uh, spent three days running. What about the average speed of this gentleman? Some others went to Hussein Bolt, calculating the average speed of Hussein Bolt, which is 11 meters per second plus compared to their own records, and checking how much they would take it to do it. One more group was not here, but it was uh, someone else. They were here, calculating the speed of tigers and big cats. Mako tiger speed. Shark. Some others went to Puerto Aventura Amusement Park uh, with a mobile calculated acceleration force of rights of uh, the Big Dipper, of uh, the Dodge Gems, of the Roller Coaster, etc. Next, they calculate accelerations for Formula One races, rockets, uh, and fighters and bombers. And uh, what difference uh, does it make? Uh, you have a piece in the classroom for you to project or to, uh, look for that, for everyone to see there is a small but big difference here in the sense that everyone has its, uh, his her own pace. We are work on speeds, but each one has his own way to go. And uh, as we go, we find up uh, additional information that, fa that we factor in. This helps my teaching. My classroom, I want to capsize it. It is fashionable. As you know, I flipped the classroom. We were doing it, though. We don't know what it was about. It implies that instead of my giving my speech, giving my screed, it's not a keynote presentation. The screed, as they say, they, uh, uh, they do homework for uh, so many pages. Uh, we'll correct it uh, in the classroom tomorrow. We do it every round. I provide them with information. I set a challenge for this information. They have to look up at home next in the classroom. We'll do the exercises individually or group of wide. And we'll share that. We'll uh, uh, debate about that. This year, we had uh, mysteries. We can't see the links here. We have no time for it. Mysteries of the heart, mysteries del cor. It is that working on the circulation uh, system. I gave them a photo with uh, links, active operational links. A mystery is uh, um, shown as I come in, they have to fix it. They get a short uh, video feature with interactive exercises for them to make. This is what they watch at home. And uh, in the classroom next, they, have, uh, they make some activities. There is an agenda to be done individually or in a group. They share. For some sessions, we eventually fixed up the mystery of the heart. Meanwhile, we uh, find out how the circulation system worked. The same applied to Newton's law last year. We've uh, uh, had the preparation to go this far. We'll be talking about organization, creation, stuff. They can do something else on top of that, I think. Now. Give a, give a hood, read a book. They're, they have understanding uh, issues with reading the sciences teachers on top of even specific uh, texts for them to read. We are keen on fixing problems with understanding. We, with the uh, students, make a, an agenda of steps to read, understand, and fix a problem. We want the students to uh, keep it inside. It's not uh, stacking at uh, stage four, and they don't know which uh, stage uh, three was. Let's uh, have a brainstorming, a comic strip. Each vignette is one of the steps. They have to think about the image in the vignette, the idea entailed by it, they modify it with the same Pixar or any photo editor available on the mobile. They conclude the presentation. I got it. I upload it on the website once I got it from them. One more case, it's not photographs, it is video features. There were children who made videos for the first time at age 12. It is working on the elements, chemical elements, but biochemically, so to speak. Here, in the video, they worked on an element, the name of the element, the symbol, atomic mass, uh, and the features about it, uh, the mass number. Some others wanted to be ahead of it. They had a sort of uh, um, a TV coverage as a TV reporters. They are the reporters finding out what behind the Tarragona marketplace is. They found that uh, uh, food we eat are, have so many uh, chemicals, uh, nuts, meat, uh, meat selenium in it. Others wanted uh, to be put down as experts, as wiseacres, and gave us 
a sort of WH questions. So, WH questions telling us they play role by uh, the food in our bodies when we eat it. In, in bilingual, it was bilingual, English and Catalan. They went ahead of it, uh, they uploaded that. Parents didn't know anything about it, and uh, it had implied a big effort from them. So they made this leaflet, they circulated it about with a free mobile application. Uh, parents read the photographies and got the video with the child uh, telling things, and they were happy about it. Uh, parents uh, helped us assess the impact of our work. I've talked about the videos, information, snapshots on the mobile. There are so many apps that are specific for us to, specific, to do specific tasks. For instance, uh, reading the lighting level. Uh, there was a, um, a light level counter in this classroom. We go out on a field day for that. We had a compass, an altimeter, and an app to measure heights of uh, trees and monuments we came across in the field day. Previously in the classroom, we worked on that the traditional way uh, with triangles, with uh, mathematics and arithmetic. So we had the application. We have dictionaries as well. Let's not go to pick up the dictionary at the uh, teacher's uh, room. Now we work on the organs. We have 3D phantoms of all organs for us to watch inside, turn around, flip them over. And the avatars have helped, helped us as well. They work. There are language professors here. They know what I am to. Not the regular English class. You are at the science in English class. And the teacher asks you to prepare an organ, describe it, and its function. And you have to do it in English. And you don't want to do it because you feel very embarrassed in front of the other students. But if you use an avatar, then it's very easy. And that's what they do. That's our way. This is our way to make them speak in English. As many people shout at it, we make the avatar. They have a Kadi. They have a game based on the human body. It is called the human body game (HBG). Scientific skills. We are a pilot school in it. It's very hard for us. It is the lab. Let's uh, make a, an assumption. Let's get a result. Uh, let's uh, analyze uh, a, an outcome into a conclusion. It is even harder to verbalize it. Let's speak about it. So we need a very funny application that gave us added value that was unexpected. There is an app called Rix. Uh, you take a snapshot and goes into into this. It is the result after the experiment and the. Soundtrack including the conclusions you eventually drew from it. Wonderful. It's OK. You can do it in the bench. But uh, since it's kept in the mobile, and it helps me reach the, uh, the risks by my colleagues somewhere else, we translated the scientific debate outside the lab. We carry on talking about it in the classroom, in the corridor. And for three weeks, we were talking about the experiments conducted in the lab, because it was an agenda of experiments uh, to uh, fix a case of a murder. It was uh, just um, uh, a blood mixing problem. This uh, may look childish. You know what, what it's about. Let's uh, read these uh, cards. There is an animal. Let's uh, push on the screen. It's the English name and the ABC letter of the animal with, with phonetics. Uh, let's mind it. Let's factor it in. Let's work on it. And so what? Let me tell you what it is about. My school is highly keen on reinforcing our links with uh, primary schools, elementary schools. We wanted our students to go there for an agenda of games and activities, teaching them. It's peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, school to school. This is, was uh, our rationale for this agenda. They, the, those uh, in second year thought it childish. Let's make uh, games for uh, elementary children. Are you able to do it? Yes, we are. We are started, and it is harder than it seemed because it's in English. And uh, let's learn how to give instructions in English in a rational, gradual way. Let's describe animals in English, everything we know about vertebrates in English. We can't explain them. So they've been working on it, doing uh, much work. There were several choices to go. Uh, the primary, the elementary children 
and came to us. I have a video for you to show, picking this, uh, featuring this. This is the game-related side of it, of these sessions. Practicing names of animals in English. She, cat. Very good. Very good. Tap on it, please. Little bit. T. Okay, now can you say another word with the letter T, please? Oh, yes. Hi, my name is Julia, and now we are going to show you a game for learning how to describe the animals. Oh, okay. All right. Is it, excuse me? It's very long. It's very long, that's right. It's green. Sometimes it's green, right. What else? Has some legs. Hasn't got legs, right. This is a good clue. Where it lives? It lives in the jungle. It lives in the jungle, right. This animal can fly. Cannot fly. This is the game related side, the show waste side of it. There is hard work behind it. Let me add that our English outcomes are below the Catalan um, average, so we have to take it seriously, unfortunately. Let me top off. This is our status, and now they are in a different stage. We've been exploring, finding specific apps to fix up specific things and tasks. One student was measuring his uh, pulse. He had to make a uh, paper for sciences. And they are networked. We had a network. But it is not for social purposes, but educational network shared by me and them. And uh, we talked about this earlier. Is it to be forbidden? In the classroom, uh, the pencil, they draw uh, things obscene. They write abuse against their fellow mates. Uh, sometimes uh, we uh, stick it at the colleague next uh, chair. We tell them how to use a pencil. The same applies to the mobile. Let's uh, tell them how to properly use the mobile. It is incumbent upon us. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. 30 seconds to go. Let me add. Let me boil it down to the fact that uh, we are helping people, organizations that made an assumption that they can change in order to improve education for students' benefit. This is the purpose of this document, of this paper. Let me recall for you that we need committed faculties. In order to change it, we need principals committed to this change. Changing education together, which is our motto, has boiled down to this video by Monica Changing Education in a classroom with the students factored in. Thank you.